ever make it such that x cross y is minus z, you're going to hang yourself. Because for one thing, that wouldn't work anymore. So be very, very careful. It must work. If you use the right-hand corkscrew rule, make sure you work with the right-handed coordinate system. All right. Now the worst part is over. And now I would like to write down for you. We, had, we pick up some of the, the fruits now, although it will penetrate slowly. I want to write down for you a equations for a moving particle, a moving object in three-dimensional space. Very complicated motion, which I can hardly imagine what it's like. It is a point that's going to move around in space. And it is this point, P. This point, P, is going to move around in space. And I call this vector OP. I call that now vector R. And I give it a sub-index T, which indicates it's changing with time. I call this location a of y, I'm going to call that y of t. It's changing with time. I call this x of t. It's going to change with time. And I call this point z of t, which is going to change with time, because point p is going to move. And so I'm going to write down the vector r in its most general form that I can do that. r, which changes with time, is now x of t, which is the same as a of x there before, times x roof plus y of t, y roof plus z of t, z roof. I have decomposed my vector r into three independent vectors. Each one of those change with time. What is the velocity of this particle? Well, the velocity is the first derivative of the position. So that is dr dt. So there we go. First the derivative of this one, which is dx dt x roof. I'm going to write for dx dt x dot, because I'm lazy, and I'm going to write for d2 x dt squared x double dot. It's often done, but not in your book. But it's a notation that I will often use, because otherwise the equations look so clumsy plus y dot times y roof plus z dot times z roof. So z dot is the z dt. What is the acceleration as a function of time? Well, the acceleration as a function of time equals dv dt. So that's the second derivative of x versus time. And so that becomes x double dot times x roof plus y double dot times y roof plus z double dot times z roof. And look what we have now accomplished. It looks like minor, but it's going to be big later on. We have a point P going in three-dimensional space. And here we have the entire behavior of the object as it moves its projection along the x-axis. This is the position, this is its velocity, and this is its acceleration. And here you see the entire behavior on the z-axis. This is the position on the z-axis, this is the velocity component in the z-direction, and this is the acceleration in the z-axis. And here you have the y. In other words, we have now a three-dimensional motion we have cut into three one-dimensional motions. This is a one-dimensional motion. This is a behavior al only along the x-axis, and this is a behavior only along the y-axis, and this is a behavior only along the z-axis, and the three together make up the actual motion of that particle. So what have we gained now? It looks like, this looks like a mathematical zoo. You would say, well, if this is what it's going to be like, it's going to be hell. Well, not quite. In fact, it's going to help you a great deal. First of all, if I throw up a tennis ball in class like this, 
then the whole trajectory is the whole trajectory is in one plane, in the vertical plane. So even though it is in three dimensions, we can always represent it by two axes, by two dimensionally, a y axis and an x axis. So already the three dimensional problem often becomes a two dimensional problem. We will with great success analyze these trajectories by decomposing this very complicated motion. Imagine what an incredibly complicated arc that is. And yet we are going to decompose it into a motion in the x direction, which lives a life of its own independent of the motion in the y direction, which lives a life of its own. And of course you always have to combine the two to know what the particle is doing. We know the equations so well from our last lecture from one dimensional motion with a constant acceleration. The first line tells you what the x position is as a function of time. The index t tells you that it's changing with time. It is the position at t equals zero plus the velocity at t equals zero times t plus one half a x t squared if there is an acceleration in the x direction. The velocity immediately comes from taking the derivative of this function and the acceleration comes from taking the derivative of this function. Now if we have a, a motion which is more complicated, which reaches out to two or three dimensions, we can decompose the motion in three I perpendicular axes and you can replace every x here by a y, which gives you the entire behavior in the y direction and if you want to know the behavior in the z direction, you replace every x here by z and then you have decomposed the motion in three directions. Each of them are linear. And that's what I want to do now. I'm going to throw up an object, a golf ball or an apple, in 26100. And we know that it's in a vertical plane, so we have we only deal with a two-dimensional problem, this being, I call this my x-axis, and I'm going to call this my y-axis. I call this increasing value of x, and I call this increasing value of y. I could have called this increasing value of y, today I have decided to call this increasing value of y. I'm free in that choice. I throw up an object, at a certain angle, and I see a motion like this, boing, and it comes back to the ground. My initial speed when I threw it was V zero, and the angle here is alpha. The X component of that initial velocity is V zero cosine alpha, and the y component equals v zero sine alpha. So that's the begins velocity of in the x direction, and this is the begin velocity in the y direction. A little later in time, that object is here at point P, and this is now the position vector, which we have called R of t, that's this vector. That's the vector that is moving through space. At this moment in time, x of t is here. And at this moment in time, y of t is here. And now, you're going to see, for the first time, a big gain by the way that we have divided the two axes, which live an independent life. First x. I want to know everything about x that has to be known. I want to know where it is at any moment in time, velocity and the acceleration, only in x. First, I want to know that at t equals zero. Well, at t equals zero, I look there, x zero, that's the, I can choose that to be zero, 